Hey everyone, my name is Ryan King and welcome to part one of my complete Blender beginner tutorial series. Now if you haven't watched the introduction video, I'd highly recommend that you do that. There will be a card up on the screen. You can just click on that and go over and watch that. And in that introduction video, I talk about what you're going to learn through this entire tutorial series and what you'll have created by the end of the series. So definitely go ahead and watch the introduction video if you haven't already before you continue part one. And then one more thing before we start, it is really important that you have a keyboard, of course, and also a mouse. So if you're using a laptop and you just have like a trackpad or something, that's going to be really hard to use Blender or really any 3D software. So I'd highly recommend you get a mouse if you don't have one. And I just have a pretty basic mouse here, but just a few important things. It's important that you have a right click, a left click, and then also a scroll wheel so that you can scroll and then the scroll wheel button. So a right click, left click, scroll wheel, and then scroll wheel button. So just those four things, uh, pretty basic, most mice have those. So, so that's just some important things that you should have on your mouse. And then if your keyboard has a numpad, that's really great. I just have a basic keyboard here and it has a numpad, but if your keyboard doesn't have a numpad, like maybe you have a laptop or something and it doesn't have a numpad, I will show you how to use Blender without a numpad. Now numpads are really important because you can use them for shortcut keys to move around the scene. So if you want to look at your model from side view or front view or top view, you can use the numpad to do that. So it is really important, but if you don't have a numpad, I am going to show you how to use Blender without a numpad. So when you first open up Blender, you're going to see something similar similar to this. So this right here is the splash screen and it has this uh, awesome artwork here by Robin Tran. So basically every time there's a new Blender version, they have a different splash screen. So your splash screen may look the same. Um, if you're watching this in the future, there may be a new version of Blender updated. And so the splash screen may look different. Now, if you're watching this in the future and there's a new Blender version, you can still totally watch this tutorial series. In future updates of Blender versions, most things are the same. So most of the buttons and most of all the things are going to be exactly where they are. Usually there's just some bug fixes. Maybe the buttons get moved around a little bit and there's some new updates and stuff. You can see right now I'm using Blender 2.91, which is the current stable version as I record this. But if you're using an updated version, you can still totally watch this tutorial series. And when you first open up Blender, some things may look a little bit different here. Uh, don't worry about that. I'm just going to click and close the splash screen and we'll play around with some of the settings in the user preferences. There's not very many settings, just a few that I want to change, uh, but I think they're important. So I'm going to go edit right here and then click on preferences. And then this second window comes up. So I'm just going to drag this, make it a little bit bigger so that it's easier for you to see. So the first thing that I'm going to do is click on this interface right here. So if I click on this interface, you can see there's this resolution scale. So if I just drag this, if I just click and drag, you can see it's going to make all the buttons bigger. So the default is at one. And I think this is actually way too small. It's a little bit hard to see, especially depending on how far away you are from your monitor. And I like to be a good ways away from my monitor to avoid digital eye strain and that kind of stuff. So what I like to do is change this resolution scale to 1.3. So I'm just going to click on it, type in 1.3 and hit enter. You can just drag this around and do whatever you want. If you want to, you can just leave it at the default and you can always come back later and change this value. So if at a later point you want to change it, you can just click on edit and go to preferences, open this up, go to the interface and just change this. So I like somewhere around 1.3. Okay, now there are a bunch of different settings here, but again, I don't want to go over everything and give you too much information. I just want to go over all the things that I think are important for beginners to learn. And as you learn more and more about Blender, you can explore all the different features. I'm just going to hop all the way down to input here. Now there's just one thing that I wanted to talk about here, and that is the very top one, emulate numpad. So this is if you don't have a numpad on your keyboard. So just to show you what the numpad does, I'm just going to close this right here. And you can also see that I have my screencast keys right here. So you can see what buttons I'm pressing. So don't worry about this. I'll show you how to move around in a moment. So how I use the numpad is if I press one on the number pad, that's going to go to front view. If I press three on the number pad, that's going to go to side view. And if I press seven on the number pad, that's going to go to top view. Now, this may not seem very important right now, but this is actually going to be super important when you get into 3D modeling. When you're modeling stuff, you're going to be using this all the time. So it's really important. You can also press like four and six and eight and two to kind of like rotate around. I don't really use this very much, but you can do that if you want. And then also the zero on the number pad, that's going to jump you into the view of the camera and the camera is right here. And that's what you use to render out the scene. So you set the camera to where you want 
and then you render that out and that's where, where it's going to render. So if I press zero on the number pad, you can see it's going to hop into the camera view. And then if I press zero again, it's going to hop out. So that's why the number pad is super important. But again, if you don't have the number pad, what you can do is go to edit and preferences because I know that like some laptops and stuff don't have numpads. And then on the input, you can click on emulate numpad. If you click on this now, if I just move this over to my other monitor, click back here on blender. Now what I can do is I can use the top number button. So one, three, and seven, and I can go to front view with one side view with three and then top view with seven. And then you can also use all the other buttons like zero to go into the camera view. So if you don't have a numpad, I would recommend that you consider getting a keyboard that has a numpad because it is going to be really useful in Blender, but you can turn this on and that way you can use the top buttons instead. All right. So with that said, let's go down to the key map here. So the main thing that I wanted to talk about is the select with mouse button. So left click select is the default and that may make total sense if I just move this out of the way here. If you use your left mouse button, that's going to select objects. So I can just click on this. This will select the lamp or the light. If I select this one, that's going to select the default cube. And if I select this one, just click on it. It's going to select the camera. Now this might sound a little crazy, but I actually use the right click select. And this is really weird because most programs and operating systems, you always use the left click to select things, but I actually use the right click select in Blender. Now I wouldn't recommend that you do this. I would actually recommend that you use the left click select because that makes sense. And because left click select is the default now, most people are going to be using left click select and it just makes a lot more sense. So I would recommend that you use left click select. Why I use right click select is because when I started using Blender uh, over four years ago, I started using Blender and up until Blender version 2.8, the default was right click select. So when I started using Blender over four years ago, right click select was the default. And that is really weird, but that was just unique to Blender. I just started using it and I just got used to it. And so now it's muscle memory and I'm super used to it. And so I'm just super used to using right click select and I don't want to switch over. So that's why I use right click select. So what I do is use my right mouse button to select objects. And I know that seems really weird. I would recommend you use left click select, but I'm going to use right click select. So now that we've talked about that, I'm going to go over what buttons you're going to be using. So I'm just going to click on the left click because I'm assuming that you're going to use that. And I would really recommend that you use that. So using the left click select, you're going to left click and that's going to select different objects. I'm going to right click and that's going to bring up this object context menu. And in a later part of this tutorial series, I'm going to show you how to use shade flat and shade smooth, but just know that these are important things that you're going to be using a lot in blender. And then if you click with your middle mouse wheel, that's going to rotate the view. So you can click and hold down, move around, and that's going to rotate your view. And then if you scroll with your scroll wheel, that's going to scroll in and out. And then if you just click with your left mouse button and drag, it's going to use this box here. And that is using this right here. That's the select box. That's the default. And I will go over these in a moment. But if you just left click and drag, that's going to use the box. Now, because I'm going to be teaching you Blender, I'm just going to show you what I use for the right click. So I'm just going to select right click and then move this out of the way. So obviously I use right click. So right click is going to select different objects. But if I left click, that's actually going to move this 3D cursor. Now this 3D cursor is a really awesome tool and it's used for many different things. Now you're probably using the left click select. So I'm just going to select the left click. So to move the 3D cursor using the left click select, you're going to need to hold down the shift key and right click. Click. Now, if I do that here, for some reason, not working, if I just select a different object and then do it, now you can see it's working. It's probably just a bug or something, but yeah, just select another object and then just start doing it. So if you hold down the shift key and use the right click select, you can move this 3D cursor. And this is important because later on in this series, you are going to be moving this around. So let me just hop back over to the right click select now to show you what I do. So I use the right click select to select objects, and then I use the left click select to move the 3D cursor. And then the same thing works for the scroll wheel. So I zoom in and out by moving the scroll wheel and then I can click with my scroll wheel, the scroll wheel button, just click on that. And then it's going to rotate around. Now, because I'm using the right click select, I can't use the left mouse button to make the object context menu come up because you can see if I left click, it's just going to move the 3D cursor. So how I make the object context menu come up is by pressing the W key. So you can see I press the W key and now that comes up. So that's what I do because I use right click select, but I would recommend using left click select. All right. So now that we've talked about that, 
we can save the preferences. So if you don't click on the Save Preferences button, then Blender's not gonna remember the different preferences that you did. And again, you can always go back to this and change it. So hit the Save Preferences button. I'm actually not gonna hit the Save Preferences button because I've uh, done some more things like, for instance, I've installed add-ons and some different things like that. So my preferences are gonna be different than yours. But things like add-ons and the other preferences here are things that you can get into later once you've learned the basics of Blender. So those are the most important things. So just click on save preferences and then close the Blender preferences. All right, so we've already talked about using your middle mouse button to click and move around and you can look around the cube here that's in the scene. And then you can also use your scroll wheel to scroll in and out. But there are a few other ways to navigate in your 3D scene. Because let's say if I just move over here, let's say I wanna go over and look at this camera. Uh, if I just move over here, I can kind of see it but I wanna kinda of look at it on this side view, and if I just rotate over here, it's a little bit hard to get to it. So what I can do is I can hold down the shift key and then click with my middle mouse wheel, and this is going to pan, so it's gonna move back and forth. So I can kinda of move over like this with my middle mouse wheel, and then hold down the shift key and click with my middle mouse wheel, and pan over, and then I can zoom in, and now if I orbit around, you can see now the center isn't really in the center here, it's kind of more over here now. So I can just click and pan, move up. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit more. So holding down the shift key, clicking with my middle mouse wheel, and then scale in. And now you can see I'm looking at the camera. And then one other way that you can zoom in and out is by holding down the control key and then clicking with your middle mouse wheel. And that way you're only gonna zoom in and out. So you can do that with the scroll wheel, but you can also just hold down control click with your middle mouse wheel and move in and out. So at first it might feel pretty hard to move around in the 3D space, but once you get the muscle memory down, it's gonna be a lot easier to move around. So, so this is something that I definitely recommend practicing. So let's just practice right now. So let's say I wanna see the cube again. I can click with my middle mouse wheel, move over, and then hold down the shift key and click with my, my middle mouse wheel, zoom over here. And then I can hold down the control key and click with my middle mouse wheel and zoom in, or I can just zoom in just like this. Now you can see here that when I zoom all the way in, it kind of stops and the center isn't really in the center of the scene here. It's kind of added a center kind of here just randomly in the scene. And this happened because we panned over. Basically at all times, there is kind of a center of where you're gonna look around. So you can see right now, if I zoom way in, it'll kind of stop and then I can look around. So it's almost like there's an invisible point right here. And that's where I'm gonna zoom in and look around at. But let's say I wanna center it back on this cube so that I can look around this cube when I click with my middle mouse button. What I can do is press period on the number pad. And that way it's gonna jump me over to that object. And now if I just zoom out and then click with my middle mouse wheel and move around, the cube is in the very center. So let's say I wanted to center my view on the camera now. So I can just zoom out by scrolling my middle mouse wheel and then I'm gonna select the camera and I use the right click, but you're probably gonna use the left click. And then I can press the period key to zoom into it. Now, if you're trying to press the period key, but you don't have a numpad, so you're pressing the other period key, then this will probably come up. And I actually don't want to use this, so I'm just going to press escape to undo this. Uh, what this does is it just brings up these settings right here, but it just brings it up in a pie menu. And uh, these are some things that we'll get into later, um, but I don't want to do that. So if you don't have a number pad and you want to zoom into an object, the best way that I've found to do it is to press shift B and then just drag a box around the object and then it's gonna zoom into it. Now this doesn't work quite as good as just selecting and using the period key, but if you don't have a numpad, that's the best thing that I've found to work. All right, so that's moving around. Now what I'm gonna do is go over how to move objects, how to rotate objects, and how to scale objects. So just select this cube here. This is just the default cube in Blender. If you press the G key, G is for grab. So you're pressing the G key, grabbing it, and then you can just click to place it. So G, and then click to place it, G, and just try that. So just move around, maybe put this cube up to the camera. So G, and then click with your middle mouse wheel, move it over. G and then click, and you can remember G by grab. Now, what if you wanna move an object on a specific axis? So you can see here, you may have noticed that there's this red line going back and forth, and if I press one, it's gonna to go to front view, and you can see that there's this red line going back and forth. This is the X axis. And there's also this gizmo here. If I just click and drag around on this gizmo, you can see that there's the X axis going back and forth, 
the Y axis going forward and backward. And then the Z axis, if I press one on the number pad, you can see it right here. It's this blue one. So that is the Z axis going up and down. So when you move these objects, you can actually tell them to move on these different axes. So let's say I want to move this cube up. What I can do is press G to grab, and then I can press Z and I'll constrain it to the Z axis. And then I can just move it down, click. Now, what if I want to move it on the X and Y? You press G to grab and then press X and that's going to move it on the X axis or you can click on Y and that's going to move it on the Y axis. So this works pretty well by pressing G and then by pressing X, Y or Z, but there's actually a quicker way to do this. And once you get more experienced with Blender, you're going to want to use all the shortcut keys that you can so that your workflow is very fast. So to do this even faster, you can press G for grab and then click and hold with your middle mouse wheel. And you can see it's going to show all the axes and you can just drag until your object is on one of the axes. So maybe I want to move it uh, this way so I can just drag over. And then once it's moving on the X axis, I can let go. And now it's going to be moving on the X axis. And then if I want to change it, I can just click again with my middle mouse wheel, move it. Maybe I want to move it close up so I can pull it until it goes under the Y axis and then let go. And now it's only moving on the Y axis. And then I can just click to place that. So it's very quick. You can just press G click with my middle mouse wheel, move it over, click G, click with my middle mouse wheel, bring it up, click. So using this technique, you can very quickly move your objects around the 3D space. So that is the grab feature. So now let's say I want to rotate the object. To rotate it, you press R and R is going to rotate this around. Let me just press the period key to zoom into it. So I can press R to rotate this around. And then again, if you press X, Y or Z, it's going to constrain it to those axes. So it's only going to rotate on those axes. And then if you want to do that really quickly, you can just click with your middle mouse wheel and then move around. And you can see that now it's going to change what axes it's moving on. And it's acting a little bit fiddly here. So I'm going to press the escape key to jump out of that and then press R and then do that again. And now you can see it's changing the different axes. And then one other thing you can do with the rotation is if you press R, it's only going to rotate it on one angle and you can click with your middle mouse wheel. But if you double tap R, it's going to go into this trackball, and then you can just move around and then place it somewhere. I'm going to press control Z to undo that. And just like a lot of other programs, control Z will undo an action and then shift control Z will redo the action. And then let's say I want to scale this object. So to scale this object, you press S and S is of course for scale. So I can scale this up. I can make this object really big or I can make it really small by pressing S and then moving your mouse and then clicking to place that. And then just like all the others, if you press S and then press X, Z or Y, you can scale it on those axes. And then if I click with my middle mouse wheel, you can scale it on whichever axes you want. And then all of these work for the other objects as well. So if I just select the camera, I can scale it, I can rotate it and I can grab it. And then the lamp here, I can grab it, rotate it, although the rotation doesn't really do anything for this certain lamp. And then I can also scale it, but the scale doesn't work for this specific lamp. Now let's say that you wanted to select more than one objects, because right now we've just been selecting one object. To select multiple objects, you hold down the shift key and then select the other objects. And you can see that when I do that, this object is yellow and this object is selected as orange. And what that means is that this is the active object, but they're both selected. So if I hold down the shift key and select this one now, they're all selected, but because this is the last one that I selected, it's the active object. Now we'll go into why you might want to use this later on, but not in this video. And then if I want to press G to grab or R to rotate or S to scale, it's going to work exactly the same. So I can press uh, G to grab and then click with my middle mouse wheel and move these around. And because they're all selected, it's going to move them all around together. Now let's say that you have a bunch of objects in your scene and you want to select all of them together. What you can do is press the A key and that's going to select all of the objects. And then to deselect all the objects, you double tap A. So if you just press A, that's going to select all of them. If you press A once, it doesn't really work. So you have to double tap A to deselect all the objects. Now, I actually don't like this. This is actually something that's been changed in a somewhat more recent Blender update. And I don't really like this. I like pressing A to select. That works really well. But double tapping A to deselect, I really don't like it. And it doesn't really make any sense to me. So if you want to leave this as default, you can. I really don't like this, though. So I'm going to change it. So I'm going to go to edit and go to preferences 
and then in the preferences click over on this key map here and then you're going to click on select all toggles so it's kind of weird i don't really know why it's named that but if you click on select all toggles and then if you want to save this you can save the preferences now you can press a to select and then a to deselect and it's only going to do it once so you don't need a double tap a you can just press it once and i just like this better so it's just my personal preference you can do whatever you want and again don't worry about all this stuff right now you can totally go back and change this at any time so just one more thing in the 3D view that I wanted to show you in this first part, I'm going to show you how to add objects and delete objects. So to delete an object, it's pretty straightforward. You just select the object and you can press the delete key and then it's going to delete it. Now I'm going to press control Z to undo that. Now another way to delete objects in Blender is by pressing the X key. And I actually like this better because my hand is usually around the control and shift key and also the A key um, so that I can use those shortcut keys. So I press the X key because the delete key is kind of all the way up here, but the X key is right next to my hand. So I press the X key and you can see that it's going to ask you if you want to delete it. It's just a double check just in case you accidentally hit the X key. So it's going to say, okay, delete and just click on it. And then it's going to delete the object. So I'm just going to select this, press X and delete it, select this and press X and delete it. So now we've deleted all the objects and our scene doesn't have anything in it. So to add objects, you can go up here and click on this add menu. But again, once you get more familiar with Blender, using these shortcut keys is going to be super important. So I think it's better if I just teach you the shortcut keys right up front. And then later on, when you're more experienced with Blender, using the shortcut keys is really going to speed up your workflow. So you can click on this add menu, but what I like to do is press shift a and you can see that there is a bunch of things here now there are a lot of things to add here and if you want to you can go around and play with these different things but in this tutorial series I'm going to show you the most important things and the things that I like to use now when you press shift a to add an object the main thing that you're going to be using is this mesh right here and you can see there's a bunch of different primitive shapes there's also the monkey here the Suzanne monkey that is the mascot of blender uh, I'm just going to add this in just to show you it's a little monkey head so this monkey head is Suzanne, and this is the mascot of Blender. So what you'll do when you're modeling is you'll choose an object that most represents what you're modeling. So for instance, in part two of this tutorial series, we're going to be modeling a house. And so I'm going to be adding a cube because of all these objects, a cube is the closest shape to a house. And there are a lot of other things here. Um, the light right here, if you want to light up your scene, uh, the point light is what we had at the very beginning, the default. So if I just add a point light and then press G to grab it, you can see there's the point light that we had at the beginning and then also a camera. If I press shift A, you can see there's a camera right here. If I click on this, you can see here's our camera. Let me just press G and bring it over and then click. And then let me just select the Suzanne head, press X and delete, press shift A and I'm going to click on mesh and add a cube. So now all the objects that we started with are back in the 3D view. Now, while we were adding in these objects, you may have noticed something, and that is that wherever this 3D cursor is, that's where the object is going to be. So you can see if I just click to place my 3D cursor, and if you're using the left click select, you're going to hold down the shift key and then left click, and that's going to set the 3D cursor, but I'm using right click. So I'm just going to left click select to place that. So let's say that I wanted to add an object kind of in the center of the scene. I can just click to place my 3D cursor right there. And if I click with my middle mouse wheel and zoom over, you can see it doesn't actually place it down there. It kind of places it a little bit away from you, but not exactly where you are. So you can see now it's pretty close to the center. So now I'll press shift A and let's say I want to add a cone. So I just click on the cone and now you can see the cone is added wherever the 3D cursor is. So that's one of the features of the 3D cursor. The 3D cursor does have other uses though. So later on in this tutorial series, we'll go over some of those other features. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for part one of this tutorial series. So what we did is we went over the user preferences and just went over the basic things. And then I talked about how to navigate in the 3D view and how to move around objects, how to add objects, how to rotate, grab and scale objects. Now in the next part, in part two, I'm going to talk about all the different windows here. I'm going to talk about like the timeline and this panel here and also these different tabs here. Uh, these are different workspaces. And then I'm also going to talk about setting up a default startup file. So join me in part two. There will be a link right up on the screen there and you can click on it when it's released. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this tutorial was helpful and I will see you in the next part.